The world of esports is fast-paced, cutthroat, and merciless. For many, the dreams of playing video games for a living never happen. And for the select few that do, it rarely lasts for more than a few years. In a world where the average retirement age in esports is 25 years old, not many people can ever find success in this industry, let alone do it for a prolonged period of time. But for Ricky Ortiz, she has used the past 20 years to achieve greater success in her fighting game career as she stands as a street fighter legend, despite hardships and challenges throughout her life. This is the story of Ricky Ortiz and how she has transcended past the average esports curve as she continues to prove that you can do anything that you put your mind to. Ricky Ortiz grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, where she was raised by an engineer and a metal worker, where she was first introduced to fighting games when her grandma babysat her and her cousin while they were at work. My parents would pick me up from my grandmother's house because they would both work in the morning and my grandmother would watch me and my cousin throughout, throughout the day until my parents got off of work. And I remember that when my parents would come to the house, my father and my cousin would go somewhere. I just never knew where they would go, but they would go somewhere. And I would always ask to go. Every time I would ask to go, my father and mother would always be like, oh, um, we're taking your cousin to the dentist. But after multiple dentist visits, Ricky grew tired of this excuse, and she begged to be brought to the gaming center where she was introduced to Street Fighter 2. Like a year or so passed, and eventually I kept bother bothering my father if I could go with them wherever they went. And he finally took me. When I went to the arcade, it was like a whole new world to me. I was like, wow, this is something so different. I've never seen this before and it was so exciting. And it just so happened that the game they were playing together happened to be Street Fighter 2. At that time, I was like so young to even comprehend something like that, that I would just watch them play. And eventually, the more I go, the more I got the courage to start playing when nobody was watching. And eventually I would just like sit there and watch and like absorb all the information and knowledge of the game, basically. Just copying things that people do when they're playing. And my dad and my cousin would like show me how to do motions like fireballs and flash kicks and all like the basic stuff in Street Fighter. And as time went on, my my father and cousin and, and I, we kept going to the arcade and literally like I just kept going over and over with them. And it, it, it just became something that we would do as a family and something that I loved. And as the years went on, I think my father and my cousin kind of outgrew it, but it's something that I fell in love with. Street Fighter became an escape for Ricky. It was her opportunity to shift away from a lonely life in school and put all her focus on whoever she was facing at the time. When I was younger and in school, I didn't really have like very many friends to be honest. So I kind of took that place as like my like my safe space. On the weekends, I'd go there on the weekends early in the morning and I'd sit there all day to the night just playing video games. Ricky Ortiz began competing in small tournaments when she was 10 years old. And while she is known for her talents in Street Fighter, her journey as a competitor began at the age of 12, where her first moments truly competing against other players came as a Tekken Tag competitor. So there was a Tekken tournament at my local arcade, and that's pretty much how I found out that tournaments were a thing. Like, they posted a bunch of flyers on it. Wow, like, I really want to enter this. I do really good against other people at the local arcade. I think I could do pretty good. Ricky ended up reaching third place in her very first tournament, where she just saw how much money could be made through her natural interest in fighting games but it was also where she discovered her passion for competition i'm just this little kid beating like a lot of top players who and i'm virtually like unknown at the time and i remember losing in that tournament and i remember crying because i was so pissed that i didn't win it was a combination of big prize pools and a passion for competition that made ricky want to compete in as many tournaments as possible and i was like wow like this is a good amount of money for you know i never seen this kind of money at being this young i was like oh, well i want to compete more because that was fun and i want to just get like really good and i want to i want to win one of these tournaments you know that was literally, that was literally what was going through my mind because i remember that. that's one of the moments i remember on them forever and that's basically what lit the fire under my ass was losing that tech and tag tournament at these events she would receive mentorship from older competitors where they would help her get rides and be able to compete in more tournaments I was the local top players, like protege, kind of like they're like, oh, like we know this kid. This kid's really good, and they would they would end up like driving me to tournaments or picking up my house, taking me to new tournaments. So I'm always I'm always thankful looking back at that how the top players at the time really nurtured me into being the player that I am. And it's not just one player, it's like so many players that helped me get to where I am today. While Ricky began competing in fighting game tournaments, her love for competing in Street Fighter didn't really take off until Third Strike. Make the first move, so what's the world be? Trapped in a new world, a street by the trick. Make the first move, so what's the world be? Trapped in a new world, a street by the trick.
At the time, her primary focuses as a competitor were centered around Tekken Tag and Marvel vs. Capcom. And when Street Fighter 3 came out, I wasn't playing it really purely based off the fact that it was out around the time when CBS 2 came out. And that was like my main bread and butter. Street Fighter 3 was a game I played to like as a filler game to kill time. But as she played more Third Strike, she soon realized just how much she loved the game. The more I played Third Strike, the more I fell in love with that game and the more I fell in love with that game, the more serious I took it. And I felt that game had the best, some of the best and the highest competition. Ricky would go on to compete in numerous Third Strike tournaments. However, the end of Third Strike also signified a shift in the fighting game community. The arcade era was coming to an end, which left a lot of the FGC in a state of purgatory, not knowing what would happen to the competitive scene. People at that time thought that the fighting game community was kind of going to die because there was no new fighting games and arcades were kind of dying and everybody was kind of growing up and there was just nowhere visually you could see fighting games going. You just you thought it was kind of like a fad or a phase and it's like, oh, now the arcades are dying so the time is up. People were falling in love with Street Fighter 4. Locals were brimming with aspiring Street Fighter competitors as the player base was reaching new highs. There would be like 20, 30, maybe sometimes 40 people signed up. You're lucky if you get something like that. But in Street Fighter 4, you go to locals and it would be like 200 people. While Street Fighter 4 was gaining popularity, Ricky's performances were taking a dip on Chun-Li which prompted an eventual shift to a new character, Rufus. I found the game to be so different at first, so I kind of had a hard time finding a footing. I initially played Chun-Li. I would do pretty good, but I would lose tournaments every now and then. I would get second place. And to me at the time, getting getting something like that is not acceptable for me. You know, you, I want to get first every time, you know? That's just that's just how I am. I'm a, I'm a competitor. Ricky's switch to Rufus was the perfect opportunity for her to revitalize her competitive placings, where she noticeably started to do better after this character switch. But it's not it. What's he gonna do? Oh, so risky. I, I can't even. It's it's fair. Yeah, he takes. Ricky, Ricky takes it. Takes it. Ricky takes it. Ricky Clappy, the crowd is on its feet. Everybody's a going crazy. crazy. Moment. You think he just won the entire quiet. tournament? Although Ricky was successful in the Street Fighter 4 era, it was just a stepping stone to what she'd achieve in the early days of the franchise's next entry, Street Fighter. Five. Ricky's early performances in Street Fighter V were some of her best. At the time, Chun-Li was considered one of the best characters in the game, which led to great performances from her end. Rumble, fell off! Ricky trying to yo, do something like a roach and atomic blast. Wow. Yo, standing short? That's it's, a legit punish? Yes. The double agent herself invaded and took the title. DTN 2016 winner, EG's finest, Ricky Ortiz. However, despite these strong performances, there was something missing from Street Fighter V that was not clicking for her. I was going to tournaments. I was performing really well. I was doing good. I was winning things. But for some reason, the game just wasn't hitting for me. And I just don't know why. Towards the end of the first year, before Capcom Cup, I had already qualified. And I was like, God, I just, just, I'm not really fond of this game. I don't want to play it that much. But obviously, I have to because, like, it's, you know, it's my career and I, I want to do good in it. For the first time in her career, playing Street Fighter felt more like a chore for her. She would be playing and winning as Chun Li but everything felt forced. I remember right before Capcom Cup, like I didn't play the game for like a month because I just didn't enjoy it that much, no matter how cheap my character was. But in the final two and a half weeks before Capcom Cup 2016, Ricky put in intense practice, which led to one of her best performances to date at Capcom Cup 2016. I'm blocked. He's still buffering. Ooh, caught him. Jumping Ricky Ortiz with a fierce. Ricky Ortiz now on match point over Gamer B. One, One more, more for Sun. Sun. There Gets it is. Gets it. Ricky Ortiz sending Gamer B to loser's bracket. Just like The I'm super's there. Good. Oh, no anti air. Was that intended to be super? Now Ricky gets one mix of away. Oh, gets the instant air legs and seals the deal, putting Yuka Dada to losers. Go for the air legs. Goichi's got it. Oh, he played so patiently. He was worried. Great patience from Ricky Ortiz and then found. Ricky oh, Ortiz is now the second US player to make top eight on winner side bracket. He's going to go. Oh, he's ready. He's ready. And he's Ricky it. takes it. He's done it. Wakes up now. Oh, interruption. Oh, oh big blow from Ricky Ortiz. He's got to do it. 
MVP and Ricky Ortiz books a place. Look at the crowd going mad. Capcom Cup became Ricky Ortiz's shining moment in Street Fighter, and it was her opportunity to bask in the spotlight as one of the best Street Fighter players in the world. Unfortunately, that success would soon go away as nerfs to Chun Li would prompt a nosedive in placements. First iteration of sometimes are always like they're always a little rocky, you know, they're not always the best or a little broken. Come to find out when it comes out, they nerf my character like into the ground. I know way out of that corner again. There's an activation from Tokido, and this could very well hurt. Very close to the end of this. One mix up now to kill. Ricky gets clipped, and that's gonna be that. The set for Echo Fox's Tokido. Screen control in favor of Ricky Ortiz. There's the activation, gets the drill, and finds the hit. Full CA available. Yeah, this could be a dead chun depending on how this goes. The spinning bird and the reversal for the punish. Goichi was ready for it. And that's like almost the first time I feel like we saw that in the entire set, but Goichi still prepared. I just couldn't make it work. Would just not take precedence over game knowledge and just character viability it just it just didn't work and that was something that was so new to me and i don't understand why like i just can't like am i bad do i suck and it was also me like like not wanting to change my character because if i knew if i changed my character i would not have fun with the game and then not would not want to play the game so i kind of just stuck it out with her and the more you play the better you're gonna get you're gonna make it work but i just couldn't make it work with that character because she was so bad no matter how much Ricky tried to make Chun-Li work in Street Fighter V, the results were not showing. This, along with a natural disinterest towards Street Fighter V, prompted a break from the game. Fast-breaking developments in the coronavirus emergency in the U.S. and around the world. Tonight, the so-called epicenter of the coronavirus crisis in the U.S. is making drastic changes to COVID-19 testing. The COVID pandemic lasted for nearly two years as the entire esports world and especially the fighting game community were put on pause. And with that extra time not spent traveling to events and tournaments, Ricky was forced to address things outside of just being a competitor. I realized really fast that I had no friends. My life and who I am is a competitive gamer and most of my friends and people I know are all in competitive gaming and I just didn't have a network or a close circle of friends who weren't in the gaming community. So when the pandemic hit, I was so lonely. I just had nothing to do and I slowly realized that I was like, wow, like this is something that I have to change. It was a much needed break away from competition as a lot of her priorities shifted away from the sole basis of being the best competitor. Instead, a lot of the time was spent thinking about things that would boost her overall happiness. And so during that time, I was streaming and I was slowly kind of building a network of friends and putting myself out there to meet people. This was slow, shortly after the pandemic had ended. I kind of focused on that at, at the meantime, just trying to build a close network of friends because I feel like a strong competitor is a happy competitor. You know, it's like if you want to compete and you want to be strong in gaming, you have to be a happy individual, have a clear mind. At the time, like me not having a close network of friends and people was not going to make me happy overall. So I focused on that at the time. I was just streaming playing Grand Blue because it felt the most Street Fighter like. Ironically enough, even though there was a Street Fighter game that was out at the time. The breakaway from Street Fighter 5 was important but many assumed Ricky had retired for competition. I wasn't really playing Street Fighter V, so I was kind of like away from the scene during the pandemic for about two and a half years. So, and people I thought had, had quit playing, but I never I never quit. I just not gonna play something that I don't fully enjoy. So I, so I didn't play it. Instead, it was a break that would make her realize her true passions for gaming were centered around her deep desire to compete, which naturally fell in line with the present time release of Street Fighter 6. So when Street Fighter 6 came out, I was extremely excited because I had missed that part of my life. I had missed competing and I missed visiting, seeing all my friends at tournaments and traveling and like all those things that come along with being a professional gamer. I like, I really yearn for that again. From the early days of beating people at her local arcade to doing things at the highest level of competition. Ricky Ortiz's career in fighting games is an example that if you truly love something, that passion and drive will never go away. My competitive drive is so much stronger than it was at that time. And I feel like it's equal to where it was during the beginning of five and during Street Fighter four. Like I'm just so happy to compete and play again. Like it's just, I really missed it so much. Like now at the start of Street Fighter six, Ricky is in a place where she is ready to unlock another level of competition with her goal to have Street Fighter six be her best performance yet. My hopes and goals are just to keep thriving as a competitive player and just get back into the scene and just try to be a voice for people like myself, like a trans individual, and just 
let people know that you can be someone like me and still be great at fighting games and you can be someone like me who's in the scene who doesn't have to be scared or ashamed of who they are i'm just yearning to compete like a lot